Hi guys, Virtus Education here with episode 4 of the CryEngine 3 SDK Beginner Tutorial Series. And in this episode, I'm going to be going over using your viewport, navigating inside of it, and most importantly, going over transformation tools and using them in conjunction with uh, your viewport to manipulate and place and change your objects in 3D space. So, let's start off by going over the viewport. Now, I have actually touched up on the viewport in a little bit of detail in the previous episode. So the viewport, just to quickly reiterate, the viewport is your eye into your 3D scene and you actually use this to manipulate and construct your scenes in 3D using your viewport. Now as I said everything's going to be constructed in here so whenever you're moving an object you'll be doing it through the viewport or whenever you want to select something to go for its properties you would be doing it through the viewport. Now one other thing that you can do which is relatively important in the viewport is that you can see exactly exactly what the player is going to see. So you can actually go ahead and play test using the viewport which is uh, pretty darn cool if you, uh, to be honest. So having said that the viewport used to construct your scene and you also use it to pretty much view what the player will be doing. Now if you want to quickly view what the player will be doing just go ahead and press Control G. Now that's just essentially how you open it up and pretty much any game you're making any level it will work for you. So, let's go over the uh, viewport navigation thing as I haven't actually touched on it as of yet. So, if you actually want to go ahead and navigate in your viewport, it's actually pretty simple. Just go ahead and right click in it. Now, just remember the viewport is this big hit box here which actually has a 3D scene in it. So just go ahead and right click in there and then just drag with the mouse to look around. That's actually pretty simple. Now, if you want to go forwards, backwards, left or right, you can go ahead and do so by using the arrow keys or W, A, S and D. I don't really need to explain which keys are going to be going for forwards, backwards, left and right, etc. You should be able to work, th work that part out. Now, keep in mind you can actually use both the uh, mouse to look around in conjunction with uh, the uh, keys. For example, you can do like little spinning motions or you can be a little more accurate rather than just going backwards, forwards, left and right, etc. etc. So that's pretty much all you need to know about navigation. It's pretty simple and you can just use those to go to the objects that you want to manipulate or get a better view or just do whatever else you might want to do with it. So yeah, now there is a few tricks and uh, so on and so forth that we can actually do with the viewport to make uh, things easier. So one thing you probably noticed if you are flying around, I'm flying around relatively slower than most of you. Uh, by default the speed is actually set to 10 times what it is here and if we go ahead and look at the little field down here which says speed, by default it should be set to 1 and you'll be flying around pretty fast uh, a bit like this. Now having said that if you wanted to you can change it to something like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 to make uh, moving around and being a little more accurate when you fly around. Now you can make this higher, lower, whatever you want. If I go ahead and set this to something like 20 I can move around incredibly fast outside of a skybox or something like 10 or one, you know, whatever floats your boat. There's also a few other things we can do. Uh, we can also play play around with the resolution to make it larger, uh, uh, to change the size of the viewport to make the viewport smaller or larger. So if you want to change that, just go ahead and right click over here. And uh, this res the default resolution for you guys will be different to mine as I have a relatively low res monitor. So you can go ahead and change this. The higher the resolution, the h the bigger the uh, viewport is going to be. So just to give you a quick example of that, um, it's actually stretched out onto two of my monitors now uh, because it is that big. And uh, yeah, so let's just go ahead and put this back to uh, the default. So there we go. If you want to change it back, just go ahead and right click and choose the uh, the resolution that was on previously or you can also just go to customization and then just change it to whatever you may want yourself so next up we have the uh, field of view you can actually change how much you can see inside of your scene uh, in terms of your peripheral vision here so if you go ahead and change to something like 90 you'll be able to see more and it also has this sort of fisheye effect. Now, in real life, you don't really get this, but this is just really used for seeing more from your scene in your peripheral vision. So I advise you keep that to 60, but if you may want to change that, you can. So just keep that in mind. And the last and most important thing in terms of viewport stuff is that you have your coordinates. These coordinates actually show you 
exactly where your cursor is in the uh, in the scene. So if I move this, you can see the coordinates are changing in the bottom left there on the X, Y, and Z axes. So anyone that's done any 3D stuff before will know how the X, Y, and Z axes work. And you can actually see a little indicator in the bottom left. Uh, Y being uh, forwards and backwards, X being left and right, and then Z being uh, up and down. Those changing based on your orientation, of course, but you should get the general understanding. So, I have these little coordinates here, and I can actually use these for moving the viewport. So, if I go ahead and, for example, uh, use the current position, uh, which is this, and then if I move this, say... 30 spaces forwards, it will go ahead and move us for... Uh, 30 spaces forwards or back, whichever it is. So if I just go ahead and move this to something like 400, it's going to move us towards that lighthouse. Now, if you do remember these coordinates to certain places, you can use them as sort of like hot, uh, hot spots to pretty much teleport between 1 and 2 to easily navigate within the viewport, which is really important. Anyway, enough of this stuff. Now let's get into actually using the transformation tools. So, as I said, you're going to need to construct your scenes in 3D space. You can't necessarily just do that with uh, navigation alone. So, whenever working in uh, something which is 3D, you're going to use the viewport to look at your objects, click them, and then uh, modify them how you see fit. So, just fly around your level, see if you can find some kind of object that you want to manipulate. Now, in my scene here, you can see I've got this nice lovely uh, rock here that I'm going to play with. So, just go ahead and click it, and instantly you'll see that we have a bunch of properties for this. And we can play around with those, but for now, we're not even going to bother touching them. But yeah, you can see these in the roll bar, and pretty much any type of actor or object that you see in your scene, the properties will come up in the roll up bar. Anyway, so, at the moment if we go ahead and try and drag this around or do anything, we can't actually do anything to it. So, having said that, we actually need to use a bunch of tools. These tools are called the transformation tools. Now, if you've got a bunch of different transformation tools, those transformation tools being move, rotate, and scale. Pretty simple, really. So I'm going to give you a quick example. I can go ahead and use the, uh, the move tool and then just drag the object around. I can then go ahead and click, select the rotate tool and start rotating this around. And I can also start to scale this to make it bigger or smaller. Now, one thing you will notice when you're using the transformation tools is that you'll get these three little axes shown up on the object on the pivot point. So from here, you can then just go ahead and move it. So if I go ahead and select the Y axis on the little indicator here, we can then go ahead and move this on the Y axis only. And I can move this left or right. Or if I go ahead and select the X axis over here, the red one, I can move it forwards or backwards. And then Y, I can move it up and down. Just have a little experiment with that. Or alternatively, if you just don't select any of them at all, you can actually just click it and then just drag it uh, freeform if you so please. Now, rotate works in pretty much the same way. You select an axis and then you just rotate it on that axis a bit like this and uh, yeah it's pretty simple really so just keep on experimenting with this and lastly we have our scale and yeah so essentially you just choose an axis and then you just make it bigger or smaller on that axis which is cool so yeah you have a bunch of other stuff you can play around with but uh, for now we're just going to be using scale rotate and move you've also got the select tool which allows you to just select it and then not do anything else but uh, we won't really be using that uh, so yeah we've also got a bunch of constraints that we can actually play around with whilst uh, trying to manipulate our objects so I'm gonna quickly fly around here and uh, find another object uh, in a location which best shows off which I'm about to explain to you. So if I go down here, um, okay so over here I've got a bunch of rocks and stuff. So let's say if we didn't necessarily want to just move it straight left or right because if we do that it's gonna go start clipping into the terrain where it's lower or higher or whatever or it's also gonna start clipping through objects. We've got a bunch of constraints. These constraints will allow us to uh, make it make these objects follow the terrain or follow the terrain and objects. So let's see if I can find some elevated uh, uh, terrain here. So if I quickly grab this rock and then select 
one of the uh, one of the constraints over here. So if I go ahead and try and move this, it's only going to do it on the y axis on the x axis. If I choose the y constraint, it's only going to let me move it on the y, and so on and so forth. But most importantly, we've got the follow terrain. So if we go ahead and try and move this, it's going to start going uh, up higher and lower dependent on where the terrain is. So I'm just going to quickly drag this up a little bit quickly. And then if I just go ahead and select follow terrain, and then if I start moving this, you're going to see that it's starting to go higher and higher and it won't clip through the terrain and it's going to stay there just pretty much exactly above it and is great. Having done that, you're not going to lose your meshes and your objects, actors underneath the level. Now, you can also do the same with this little tool here with objects. So whenever you move something, it goes over other actors and objects as opposed to just clipping straight through them. So having said all that, I've pretty much done everything that I want to for this episode. Experiment with transformation tools, your select, your move, your rotate, your scale, see what you can do. So thanks for watching, comment, like, and subscribe, and don't forget to check out the next video. Goodbye.